Hi friends, welcome to my channel. If this is the first time that you're here or the hundredth time that you're here, I welcome each and every one of you guys to my channel here today. Uh, my name is Juan and I am the Yarn Addict. And of course, as always, we are here to talk about yarn and all things yarn and crochet related. And uh, before I jump into today's topic, I actually wanna show you guys my t-shirt that I got off of Amazon. I encourage you guys to jump on there and get yourselves one if this is your thing. Um, I need coffee, I just need coffee and my crochet. It's definitely my vibe. For those of you who know me outside of YouTube, um, you know that I'm always holding a cup of coffee. It's my thing. Um, and also my passion for yarn, uh, my addiction to crochet. And so yeah, it was just the perfect combination. This is definitely my vibe. So if any of you guys know of any other places I can get shirts like this, um, that's not necessarily Amazon, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll give you a shout out if I use your link. So um, without further ado, we're gonna jump into today's topic, which is um, my whips as well as completed projects. And I also want to feature a project that I did in the recent past. I haven't featured it yet because I didn't have a YouTube channel yet. So yeah, there's that. So first and foremost, I wanna talk about this Hexi Cardi. Um, it's all the craze right now. A lot of people are talking about it. Um, many channels are covering it, um, which is great because it just gives us more content to watch, which is amazing. Um, however, I was drawn to Crystal's uh, tutorial for her Hexicardi and decided um, that I needed to jump on board and try it myself. So on my last video, I talked about all the things with the Hexicardi and whatnot. I went to the store, um, more specifically, I went to Michael's, I did a Michael's haul, and I picked up uh, Karen Macchiato cakes um, in the colorway Breathe. And I was drawn to this because of the purple. And I bought four skeins because I am a tree. I am six and a half feet tall, if you don't know this already. And so I felt that I needed the extra yardage because what if I want a hood? What if I want pockets? So um, I came on, I talked about the specs and everything. And um, yeah, so I went ahead and I made a swatch and I took a break from that swatch and I picked the cake up and I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, I need to read the whole cake next time. Whenever I go yarn shopping, I need to read the entire cake because the one thing that I missed was probably the most important thing that I missed, which is the Karen Macchiato cakes is hand wash only. Um, most of you guys don't know me outside of YouTube, which is absolutely fine. But if you do know me outside of YouTube, you know that I am an extremely busy person. I have a career that I've been at for the last 18 years, which drains a lot of my time. Um, I also have a part-time job um, when I'm not at the daytime job. And that part-time job funds my landscape. Everything you look, you're looking at, and it is all real, it's not a backdrop. I've gotten many comments about this being a backdrop, I don't know why, but it's real. Um, and my part-time gig pays for that. Um, in either case, with what little time I do have, I'm creating. And then when I'm not creating, I'm sitting in front of you. So my time is very, very valuable to me. Um, I try to be as efficient as possible. So when I'm sitting in front of you guys, it's because I carved that time out. So what I don't have time to do is to hand wash projects that I've completed. So... I'm literally on the fence because I'm in love with this color story. I'm in love with this cake. I mean, so is it worth, uh, is it worth the time to hand wash a project? Um, let me show you the swatch that I made. So this is where I'm at now. Um, I'm in love with it. All, the whole color story here, I, I'm in love with it. I'm not going to fuse in any other cakes, any other skeins. I'm going to let this tell the entire story, right? And then, um, as you noticed, I did all double crochets. And I am using a six millimeter hook. Okay. 
and I just want the color to tell the story. And um, outside of this, I was actually going to feature some different kinds of stitches in the wrists and the ribbing at the bottom and all around and all the things. So I do have a plan outside of this double crochet um, hexi cardi. Um, my drawback is, is this hand washing situation. Has anyone thrown this into a machine? And if so, how did it come out? I'm, I'm really dying to know. The one place I should have checked and I didn't check was um, Bagaday's channel. She does the ringer test, for those of you who don't know. I did not check her channel for that, and I should. Shame on me. But in either case, lesson learned, right? I mean, read the entire label. Wa read the wash instructions. Um, and I didn't do that, guys. Disappointing. Anyway, if I jump ship on that, I will think of something, but I want it to be a labor of love. I want, if I'm going to hand wash something, it's going to have to be because I put a lot of labor into it. These, um, hexicardies, they go fast. I mean, I, I taught my mom how to make one today, um, using the actual granny square and not, you know, a more solid situation. Um, and we have both panels done and I came home from work. I came home from work at 6 p.m. tonight, and we had both panels done by 9 o'clock. So um, they go very quick. Whereas if I'm going to do something, it needs to be a labor of love, especially a hand wash situation. Anyway, in that last video, I talked about having a backup plan, which I do, and I'm absolutely in love with this backup plan. So it's the Loops and Threads Impeccable in the Tweeds, and the colorway here is Charcoal Tweed. Um, I mean, I'm in love with this. I love this. Um, it is a four weight yarn and it calls for a five millimeter hook. That's not for me. I used a six millimeter hook and this is what I came out with. It is a double crochet situation, but I, that's intentional because I want all of the specs to talk. I want it to tell everyone who looks at it a story. It's going to be amazing. So how I'm going to do this is the same as this if I continue this which is I'm going to feature different stitches around the wrist around the bottom and around around here like around the collar and down um, and I'm going to have some amazing buttons definitely wooden buttons but I'm thinking like something like pretty you know pretty thick I want it to be um, proportionate because I am making this for me. I am six and a half feet tall and I can't have little itty bitty buttons. <laughs> they gotta be somewhat proportionate to my height. So anyway, there's that. Um, another uh, whip that I have is this. So this is Lion Brands, uh, Hometown USA in the colorway Anchorage Ice. It is a six bulky weight yarn and it's 85 yards I believe let me just double check I don't want to be wrong and tell you guys something else and it isn't that it is 64 yards and yeah so there's that and I made a hat I'm going to take this off and I'm going to show you this hat and I'm going to explain why I have this still I left that there intentionally and this is the hat. Oof, boy, is it bulky. <laughs> oh, my God. So that is, that's the situation here. Loving it. I don't like how it looks when it's not on my head, but when it's on my head, it's okay. And all I used is double crochets all the way down up until the bottom five rows there, if you can tell the difference there. Um, where I used single crochet to kind of like bring it in to give it some, I don't want to say structure, but to kind of give it some strength there. Because this bulky yarn is very loose and lacy-like in a thick way, if that makes any sense. But I, I kept this like this because, as is with most things, I'm like, okay, this is less than 80 yards. 
and I was trying to make a scarf to go with the hat, and I bought this yarn. It came out of a mystery box from Lion Brand. Recently, I think it was like a month or so ago, they featured uh, mystery boxes, and in that mystery box, I got a three-pack of this. And I'm like, what do I make with that? Obviously a hat, but is it going to be enough for anything else? So I started this. And of course, I made an amateur mistake, which shame on me because I know better. I should have started with a hook size larger than this so that it comes out like this when I got to the second row using the smaller hook. So it calls for a nine millimeter hook. I should have started my chains with a 10 millimeter hook and then went to the nine millimeter on row two. It would have flattened that out and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any of this this curvature happening here. In either case, I have this left. There's only 64 yards here, and this is what I have started. This is definitely not enough to do what I need to do with this. Um, maybe I, I can do like an infinity cowl. Um, that's why I haven't frogged it yet, because I know there's some options here. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, please drop them in the comments. I do read them all, so uh, please. But the hat, it gives. I like it. All right, so that is that work in progress. Let me just sit that over here next to my computer. I'm going to put my beanie back on. I love this beanie. And it's uh, Premier Puzzle in the colorway Backgammon. And I've had quite a few people ask me about patterns. So... I make most of my stuff on the fly. I do hand write my patterns out. Um, let me just show you what my patterns look like when I write them out. This one here is the rib ombre scarf that I have a tutorial for. That's kind of how I write it out. And what I'm trying to do is take the shorthand version and type it out as if we're talking. Make it plain English because what I don't want is to spend my time writing out a pattern and then have a million emails, what did that mean? What does that mean? If I spell it all out, everyone will understand what I mean the first time. So I'm working on it. Um, I've gotten hundreds of emails and I'm trying to get to them. So if I haven't responded to you, uh, please forgive me. Um, just know, as of now, I am putting out patterns, but I'm, I'm, I'm translating them into English longhand patterns for you guys. Um, because I am a left-handed crocheter and most of my viewers are right-handed crocheters. So um, I can just flip the camera, um, which I do plan on doing, but I don't want to, um, jeop not jeopardize, but I don't, I don't want to compromise my integrity. I am a left-handed crocheter and you know, I just want to make sure that everyone understands that um, going in. So long short of it is, is that I will be working with you guys on these patterns. Circling back to this, this is one of the patterns that everyone's asking for. It is a standard beanie. Um, I will literally write out the pattern and I will put it on the internet for you guys to pull. And yeah, so more details to come on all of that. Um, the next thing that I completed was this. This is a Celtic knot. Celtic knot uh, scarf. So there is a braid going all the way down with a tassel on the end. And then let me get closer. This is all braided all the way down with tassels on the end. I didn't, I don't like big tassels. I made them small. So there's that. Um, this is in the colorway fall and the white or the, the white color you're seeing is the Aaron, which is this right here. And the fall is right here. And so, yeah, can I get this all in one? Okay, so that's that's the, the length of it. It is my wingspan. 
<laughs> that's how I measured it. I'm like, this is enough. So the entire thing is made with double crochet. There's nothing intricate about this. Um, the idea, this is just my take on uh, Tina's um, Celtic Knot scarf. Um, if I can find the link, I will share that with you guys. If I can't find it, just in the search button or search tab or whatever, um, type Celtic Knot sh uh, shawl and you should be able to find it. But yeah, so every group of color is six rows divided by one color of Aaron. And yeah, we love that. And it's big and bulky and thick. And guess what? I've had to go with it. But let me tell you the story about that. So I made this, right? And then I'm like, let me just go ahead into the other yarn room. Because as I mentioned in my other videos, I have two yarn rooms. This one and then the one next door. Um, I went into the other room. Not here, right? I went into the other room and I pulled a skein of fall not realizing that is a different uh lot so this is a lot darker than this so i had to come back and use the right lot it's significantly different different it almost looks like like different yarns altogether but the colorway labels both said fall i just find that amazing <laughs> it's so drastically different. In either case, I made this to go with this, but yeah, not happening. So this is what this is. This is what it's going to have to be. I wanted to fuse white in this. I, I featured this in one of my other videos, but it didn't have any Aaron in it. And so I'm like, I should put Aaron in this to match this, but I guess we're not going to have that. I mean, I could, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Actually, can I step back here? Uh, yeah. We like it. So that is a completed project, guys. And there's that. Okay. I'm going to take this beanie off. And I'm going to put this beanie on. Okay. Alright. So, there's that. And then, I do have a work in progress here. This is... Um my version of Bag of Day's Opera Throw. You can type in the search box, Opera Throw, Bag of Day Crochet, and she has a cherry red version of this. Um, the difference is, is that I did not use the bobble stitch that she used. I used what was called a bean stitch. And the difference is, is that it's one loop shy. It's, uh, yeah, one wrap around, one loop shy of what she did. Um, and the funny story about that is, is <laughs> I didn't do the same stitch because I can't do that stitch. Um, not that I don't know how, it's that my hands are so big. My hands are nine inches going this way. And the needles are little and I just couldn't get the tension tight enough for it to look right in my opinion. So I just looked up another stitch and the bean stitch is what I came up with. And so, yeah. This is three skeins in so far. It's for a queen size bed. According to my calculations, I need 14 skeins to finish this. Um, this is skein number four. And the colorway here is Soft Navy Speckle. Uh, it is exclusive to Walmart. And it is 482 yards. And it does call for, um, surprisingly enough, it calls for a five and a half millimeter hook. Um, I'm using a six millimeter J hook because that's my vibe. I love the J hook. Okay. So there's that. And I'll keep you updated about that. That's a labor of love. That's what that is doing right now with that. So yeah. 
I'm rambling. I apologize. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to tell you guys about as far as a work in progress isn't necessarily my work in progress. It was actually my mom's. Um, my mom is an 80-year-old yarn addict as well, and she's been cro crocheting for well over 50 years, and she has she's developed macular degeneration in her eyes, so when she looks straight ahead like I'm looking at you guys, there's big black circles right in front of her. So all she has is her peripheral vision. Um, and as of late, she's been crocheting, looking straight ahead, using her peripheral vision. So her crocheting isn't, you know, what it used to be. Um, in either case, take for example, this is her granny square. I think it's amazing for somebody with macular degeneration. I mean, is it perfect? No. Um, I mean, her joins and all the, you know, the rows, it's not perfect, but you know what? It's amazing for somebody with her condition. In either case, she had about 84 of these squares using all of her stash um, from her, her drums. And this is what I have left, but I took them from her because she was like, just throw them away. I don't want them anymore. And I'm like, no, we're not going to waste yarn. I'm going to put these together and we're going to give them, give the, the, the blanket to someone. Um, so... I took them from her and I joined, I joined them. Um, let me step back and show you guys the big Ophi chair, the big leather chair. Um, this is what we have so far. Let me step back further. Can you believe? She wanted to throw away all these beautiful squares. I wasn't having it. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way we're throwing this away. I'm going to put these together and we're going to give this to somebody who either wants it really bad or needs it or whatever the case is. In either case, um, yeah, this is definitely not going in the trash. But I actually joined this with single crochet, chain two, single crochet. I did not crochet all of this let me get closer so i can show you guys let me flip this so that's how i crocheted that just a yeah single crochet and then i chain two and then single crocheted and then in the middle you know i just made sure that everything lined up and matched and it, it actually came out really, really nice. And she was all upset because her squares are not coming out perfect. I said, okay, mom, I know you've been crocheting for 50 years, but there's a thing called um, a board and, you know, pegs, and we can do all the things to make that flat. As long as your stitches are right, we can make the square correct. She's like, eh. And I said, you know what? I might just put this together and give this back to you to show you like what could have potentially, you know, got thrown away. Anyway, joining this literally took me about an hour. It doesn't take long at all to join that, join these squares that way. You just line them up, get the holes to line up, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and you could just go to town. Keep a pair of scissors by you and keep um, a darning needle close by to weave in those ends. Um, but if you go in a straight line without stopping, you don't really have that many ends to sew in. It actually went pretty quick. This is the other side, by the way. I don't know if you can see that. It actually turned out really nice, guys. I'm excited for her because she actually thinks, <laughs> she thinks that um, I'm going to, you know, give this to somebody. I actually want to give it back to her and be like, surprise, this was what you were going to throw away. Um, okay. So the other thing that I wanted to show you guys was a project that I completed a little while ago um, before I started my channel. I did a stitch along um, with the Crochet Crowd. I did the study of ombre at the same time that I did their study of determination because they have it, they have it going in one week blocks. For many of you who 
um, have participated in, in those projects, you know that they come in one week increments. So I would finish the one week increment in just a few hours and I'd be like, okay, well, I want something else to work on. So I chose another project, which was the study of ombre. And um, I'm looking at it because it's right here. And um, yeah, I actually finished this blanket before the last week of the study of determination, which I believe it ran longer than four weeks, I think. In either case, I really want to show you this because it's beautiful. I absolutely love this blanket. If, it, if there was a blanket that I was going to keep, it's going to be this one. Let me show you. Let me slide the chair over again. Okay. Look at how beautiful this is. <laughs> you haven't even seen it yet. I'm talking about it. Okay. Look at how beautiful this blanket is, guys. It, this is gorgeous. Look at the middle. All the texture, the stitch definition. I absolutely love this blanket. And I, I think his um, pattern only called for like a color story of three um yeah i think i used four or five different ombres in this I'm, I'm in love with this blanket if there's one that i'm keeping it's definitely this because of all the labor that i put into this blanket it was a lot of work and i love this blanket it's i love this so kudos to mikey and the crochet crowd um, yeah, I love it. Okay. Um, we're 26 minutes in. Okay. So I have one final thing to show you, I think. Yeah. It, it's a work in progress that I had since 2015. Um, I, and in 2015, I lived in Boston and I was crocheting and I had to stop. Um, because of work demands and whatnot. So the project went into this bin here. Hasn't really come out since, but I want to share this with you guys because I'm actually going to open the vault and figure out a plan on getting this done. So I did squares, guys. <laughs> I did squares, all single crochet squares, um, 25 stitches across in either direction. Obviously, I used my favorite yarn at the time, um, Red Heart. Look at the old label. <laughs> I actually think this color is discontinued. It's called Honeydew. I've seen it on the website, but it's not orderable. In either case, um, my thought process was I was going to do Colors of the Rainbow. I was going to do the dark and then the light version of that particular color of the rainbow. Um, so I have the blue... I have the red with the pink, and then I have the purple with the lilac or lavender, and then I have, oh look, what do you know, there's a hook. Um, there's a green with the honeydew, and then um, I have yellow here. I think I got caught up because I couldn't find pale yellow to go here. So in either case, what I thought about this was I can't get the honeydew anymore, so I'm going to have to ixnay on the green. Um, but I have 20 of each of the colors that I've shown you so far um, that are completed. So I have 20 of these, 20 of these, and 20 of these, right? So there's 60. But then I have... 18 of these without the honeydew and two of these with honeydew on them but i only have one skein left to my name in all my yarnscape this is the only shade of green that i have yeah and i have different shades of green but i don't have this it's a shame i'm thinking about frogging the honeydew out of the ones that i do do have done and maybe do like a sage what do you guys think 
And now, guys, I do have pale yellow. Hold on. It might, it might be a thing. Let's see, guys. Let's go to the yarn wall. I have some Value Craft in what color? Color light yellow. So what are we thinking? Maybe I can do something like that. I don't know. Tell me what you think, guys. Should I abandon the ones that are not done and just stitch the ones together that I do have done? Or make this a true labor of love and get all the, all the squares done? Um, I have yellow to finish. I have green to finish. And then orange. Where's orange? Yes, I have orange here. So I'm going to need like a pale orange, maybe a gold. I don't know, guys. That was the other reason, too. Pale orange? Is that even a thing? No, it would be a yellow, right? No, because gold is too, like, brownish. <sighs> Look. That doesn't go. I don't know, guys. I'm stuck like Chuck. I don't know a lighter version of this orange. So, there's my dilemma, guys. Maybe I should just put a lid on it, figure out an exit strategy, and just be done with it all together. I don't know. Tell me what you think, guys. I love one thing I do like about my viewers is you guys are very, very um, forthcoming with information. I love that about you guys. So please just tell me what you guys think. I love that. Um, so there's that. Anyway, there's all the whips and the completed projects and everything in between. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, um, feel free to hit like and subscribe. Um, and if you didn't, please drop some feedback in the comments on ways that I can do better because as you know we're all human right so um, that is all I have for today um, I hope you enjoyed it and until the next one be amazing have a good one